come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. What are you doing right now? Give me the next hour of your life. Let me fill it full of mystery and suspense. And who knows, that hour might just last as long as eternity. Is there a judgment? And is there a judge? At the very end, do we approach the final bar, the ultimate bench? We do, the philosopher tells us we do. And sitting there, ready to put on the white cap or the black, is the severest judge of all. And from his judgment, there is neither appeal nor hope of reprieve. For this judge, this last stern arbiter of our fate, is the very person each of us was meant to be. Our mystery drama, Every Blossom Dies, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Michael Tolan. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Why does the moth constantly seek the flame? Surely the moth must be aware of the ultimate consequence. The question will only permit two answers. A. The moth is driven by mysterious forces beyond our comprehension. Or B. The moth is out to have a good time and simply doesn't care. Like so many moths, there are so many girls like Georgia Temple. Pretty, vivacious, fun to be with smart, except for one little thing. They have atrocious luck with men. I wish I could go on talking about Georgia longer because the moment I stop, she's going to be killed. But fortunately, none of us here may prevail against fate. What? What are you doing? Why, why are you pointing that gun at me? It's not a joke, Billy. I don't like it. Billy, don't look at me like that. be the last. But you usually call. I'm sorry. Did I did I ruin the steak? Steak? You ought to do the shopping. You're lucky to get stew. Huh. Well, if it's ready, I'm ready. You know, I was really worried, Bill. Why should you be worried? You mean a cop's wife doesn't have the right to worry? Oh, I'm not really a cop in that sense. I mean, I'm not in uniform. I'm called in after the crime. Jerry, Ferris, and me. Whatever shooting or stabbing... Oh, please, Bill. The rough stuff has already happened. Jerry and I, we do the gentleman's job, the inquiry it's called. Well, you still should have phoned. That's right. And there's no excuse. I wanted to know about dinner, so I called the desk at 5, and they said you'd left for the day about an hour before. And do you know it's 7.30 now? Well, darling, I, no. um... No, honey, I... I'm sorry. I have no right to... No, ask. you have every right. No, not under these conditions. Barbara, if you want to know no, where I was... because... That would mean that I'm... Well, I'm taking that note seriously. Barbara, let me tell you. I don't believe that note. It was sent by some vicious psychologist. Darling, I want to explain. If a person has something to say to me about my husband, if anyone wishes to accuse my husband of infidelity, let that person face me openly and with proof. I'll tell you where I was this afternoon. I just know you wouldn't have another woman. You are sure of me, aren't you? I know you, that's all. It's just a note like that. Well, it's upsetting. Darling, why didn't you let me see it? Because I... I could have taken it to headquarters and turned it over to the lab. I didn't want to get involved in anything and... Oh, it's just a crank thing anyhow. I thought it'd be best all around if I just tore it up. I don't even know why I told you. Why? Well, I'm just scared to think there are people with that type of mentality running around. Look, the fact is, I left headquarters completely resolved to get home early when I saw someone, a hoodlum who has no business in this particular territory. 
I thought I'd keep an eye on him for a while to see where he might lead me. And where did he lead you? To a rooming house where he's evidently living. So I filed him in my mind for future reference and came home. Well, I hope you like this stew. <laughs> I made it with wine. How could it be bad? And a little music to aid the digestion. <laughs> Uh, do you mind? But I love it. You hear it everywhere. That's the trouble. I've been listening to it all day. So have I. And I never get tired well, of it. Well, could we could we just do without it? Oh, sure. But it's such a pretty tune. I think it's the title that turns me off. Every flower must die. No, it's every blossom dies. Kind of gives it a feeling of mystery. All right, if you really want to hear it. Oh, not if it really bothers you. No, it doesn't. Go ahead, play it. No. No, I'd rather talk about something more important. What? Well, I hate to nag, but it's money. I'm short sure again this week. I know, I... I know. Look, I, I just have this situation. Now, who could that be? I'm afraid I know. Jerry Ferris tried to reach you a half hour ago. He left word to call us. Honey, why didn't you tell I me? I did want you at least to have your dinner. Oh, well. Hello? Bill, saddle and ride. Now, not me, friend Jerry. I'm starting my 48 hours off. We got us a homicide. The address is 718 Hayes. You don't need more than 15 minutes to get here. Ferris. Uh, yeah, I better run. Can't you just finish? No, dear. I don't even know what kind of homicide we're up against. I better get right over there. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it isn't as if you didn't warn me before we were married. Look, darling, about that note. I've already forgotten about it. I wish you would, too. 718 Hayes. 718 Hayes. What, Bill? It's the address where I'm supposed to meet Jerry. That's northeast, isn't it? Yeah. Now, why should that address sound familiar? You made a good time. Jerry, don't you have an ear for music? That needle's stuck in a groove. I know. Well, turn the damn thing off. Don't be sore. I know I pulled you away from dinner. Why are you just standing there listening to that? I'll explain. Her well, name on the door says Georgia Temple. Is that her on the floor? Yeah. Why? You mean Doc hasn't been here yet? Everybody's been here and gone. I decided not to move her until you showed up. I want to get some of that famous Bill Maitland insight. Well, I don't do too well on an empty stomach. Bill, we got to crack this one. The mayor, the DA, they're all up for re-election. Safety, that's the big thing today. Yeah, how can you knock it? Incidentally, you signed out at four to go home and we couldn't reach you. I ran into a guy I knew from the army. We stopped for a couple of beers. What do we got here? Her name is... was... Georgia Temple. Turns out she's an old girlfriend of yours. I never knew a Georgia Temple. Now, now, let's get that famous Bill Maitland memory in gear. The name, Georgia Temple. Temple. Georgia Temple. Oh, there was that murder at the Carousel Club about a year ago. Keep going. Georgia Temple was the singer there. And we picked up everyone in the joint for questioning, and since we finished late at night, we gave her a lift home. You mean you gave her a lift home? You topped me off first, as I recall. Because I had to pass your house first. I just mentioned a fact. I read nothing into it. Anyhow, I just dropped her off. I know. I kept thinking, what a shame. Both of us were married. <laughs> that doesn't stop a lot of guys. But it short circuits guys like you and me. You're too idealistic and I'm too scared. No wonder that address sounded familiar. Yeah, well, we'll meet her again. Clothes aren't mussed up. No signs of a fight. No marks of any kind. Doc says just three shots. You been through the place? Just a quick glance around. Doesn't look like a robbery. There's her purse, good-looking portable TV. There's silver in the chest drawers. Now let's rule out a robbery. And Doc's pretty sure she wasn't assaulted. No sign of forced entry, so evidently she knew the guy. There's a lot of anger, a great deal of passion involved here. Now yeah, why? She was shot three times. Why? Why fire three shots? Any one of them would have been enough. One in the head, two in the heart. As if the killer were determined to annihilate her completely. Who do we look for? A disappointed boyfriend? Those are always good. <sighs> who found the body? The lady who has the apartment down the hall. I got her statement here. She kept hearing the music. What music? This. 
Now, will you shut that off? It's driving me nuts. Yeah, well, it was driving the neighbor nuts, too. It kept going and going for two hours at least. So she knocked on the door. She couldn't get any answer. And for some reason, she got nervous. Called the police. What was the reason she got nervous? She couldn't say. Well, if she's down the hall, let's ask her. As I tell you, I heard the music, and I knew the needle must have been stuck. And then, Mrs. Woodruff? Well, I've already told this officer. I went down the hall, knocked on her door, but received no answer. Yes? I called to her. Miss Temple? Miss Temple, but there was no answer. Poor child, now I know why, and... Uh... Yes? Miss Woodruff, why are you staring at me? Well, I'm not staring at you, young man. Uh, I'm sorry, perhaps I shouldn't have used that word, but it... It does appear that you are looking at me rather intently. I'm... I'm sorry, I do give that impression sometimes. But it doesn't do me any good to look at anyone in any way. You see... I'm blind. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's quite all right. You'd never know it, ma'am. You'd never know it here in my home, where everything is meticulously arranged. Uh, you say you heard the record player in Miss Temple's apartment, and it kept playing the same thing over and over again. There was no answer when you knocked on her door. No answer. And you became very nervous and called the police. That is correct, sir. What would have made you that nervous? I can only say... An old lady becomes nervous for any reason, or no reason. About Miss Temple? She seemed a nice enough young lady. Of course, she only been living here a few months. I hear she was a singer. Yes? But she wasn't working. What did she do during the day? As far as I know, she didn't do anything. But, but I shouldn't say that. She did practice a lot. Voice, you know, and acting. You heard her do this? She had a tape recorder, and she'd work with it all day. Did she have any visitors? Oh, uh, well, I shouldn't say this. Say what? She had a gentleman friend. Who? I don't know who. He would come and go. I could hear them quarreling sometimes. About what? Two things. Always the same two things. Money was the first. And the same thing? He was unwilling to divorce his wife. Now I know why I felt nervous. This time their voices had an especially ugly tone. There was anger. The man, did he have a distinctive voice? Well, I never heard it very clearly. It was always on the other side of the wall. What kind of voice was it? What kind? Well, um... I would say he had a voice that sounded very much like yours, Lieutenant. Very much like yours. If they say, physician, heal thyself, should they also say, policeman, investigate thyself? Well, there's such a thing as coincidence, and certainly we all know about circumstantial evidence. Right now, we only know that a girl named Georgia Temple has been shot to death in her apartment. We have no real evidence that could point to anyone. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Georgia Temple was found shot to death in her apartment. The police are naturally asking the expected question, who killed Georgia Temple? So far, there isn't any evidence that would point to anyone. There is, however, a clue, a lead. It isn't much, but it's all we have. And it points at one person. And that person happens to be the police detective who is heading the investigation. Let me understand this, Mrs. Woodruff. You've heard this man's voice. Yes, Lieutenant. And it reminds you of mine? Well, it sounds like yours. They say that blind, that... Sightless people have remarkable hearing. Oh, it's like everything else. Some do, some don't. And the fact that your voice sounds almost exactly like the... the gentleman friend of Miss Temple's... well, that doesn't have to mean very much. After all, just as there are people who look very much alike, 
There are people who sound very much alike. Thank you, Mrs. Woodruff. I hope I've been able to help you, gentlemen. You were very helpful, Mrs. Woodruff. Well, Bill, have we cracked this case this fast? Are you the killer? If she's willing to testify under oath that it was my voice. Were you pulling a fast one on everybody? In what way? In every way. Like you saw her home that time. You did, didn't you? Yeah. And maybe you said, why not come in for a nightcap? Tell more. And maybe you did, and, well, maybe one thing led to another, and you've had this cozy little setup for the past couple of years. Keep talking. But <laughs> you know the course of true love. It never runs smooth, and so maybe you, you have this fight, and you pump three slugs into her. Maybe you better check my service revolver. <laughs> I already got the lab report. The weapon was a twenty-two caliber. Well, I guess that puts me in the clear, huh? I guess it does. So where are we? We know it's a guy. They quarreled. For any one of uh, the maybe reasons or something else. How carefully have you searched the place? We don't have any prints. You mean no fingerprints at all? None. Not even hers? Not even hers. But her prints should be all over the place. After all, she lived here. Nothing. That means he took a rag and worked the whole apartment over. Because his prints must have been all over the place, too. This guy spent a lot of time here. Somebody must have seen him. Look, why don't you ring some doorbells? I'll poke around the apartment. Uh, there's no good in the eyewitness department. Four other tenants. Mrs. Woodruff, who's blind, we already know about. Down to three. Mr. Sazerac's a musician. All night, sleeps all day, doesn't know anything. Mr. McPhee has been in Afghanistan for the past four months. Nobody can tell us when he'll be back. The Lewises are in Florida, where they spend six months of the year. And that's it. Now, what do you got? I looked through the garbage can. I found these papers. These half-torn, crumpled papers. Here, read. Ask your husband where he is all the times when he tells you he's at work. Ask. And stuff that's crossed out. Now, read the next one. Ask your husband where he is when he's supposed to be working. Ask him why money is so short. The rest is crossed out. Yeah, she was writing or had written a note. These are just the copies she made the mistakes on. Then when she typed one, finally, that was okay, that was the one she sent. Yeah, that figures, Bill. She sent a note to the guy's wife. But why? Who knows why? Maybe to force him into some kind of move, to put him in a position where he'd have to choose between them. She's got a typewriter. I saw it in her bedroom. Yeah, you can see these were typed on her machine. So she sent the note. The guy's wife got it. She raised the roof. The guy got so mad he killed her. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. So, somewhere there's a note that was typed on her machine. Some wife has it. If we find the wife, we find the guy. Hey, I remember you fellas. You're the cops that was in the place the night we had that uh, unfortunate situation. Tell us about Georgia Temple. Poor Georgia. Is that all you can say? Well, it about sums it up. Poor Georgia. She left here about a year ago. Did she go to another job? Mm-mm. No, she... I guess you'd have to say she retired. At her age? Well, that's what it came to. Seems she started running around with a guy. Who? Nobody knows who. Anyhow, she must have been nuts about him. She quit singing just because he told her to. Why? I asked her. She said he doesn't want me to be an entertainer. He doesn't want to share me. So she quit. How did she live? He was supporting her. He must have been a man with money. No, not too much. Not the type that's got it to throw around. After all, she wasn't living in a life of luxury. If that's what she wanted. She could have done better. You think so? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she was a kid who could have gone places. But, you know, some gals, they just get tied in with the wrong guys. I guess you fellas see things like this every day. Maybe every other day. You still didn't tell me why you wanted to come back to the apartment, Bill. The tape recorder. Mrs. Woodruff said Georgia Temple worked with a tape recorder. Yeah? Where is it? Do you remember seeing it? No. Maybe it was stolen. Now, come on. Why would a guy come in here, kill her, and just take the tape recorder? She had money in her purse, remember? Okay, let's look around. Hey, hold it. I think I remember something. 
When I looked through her bag, I think I saw... What? Now, hold it. Uh, Lieutenant Maitland, let me have the property office, please. What do you think you saw? Maxwell, this is Bill Maitland. The stuff that belonged to Georgia Temple. See if there's a pawn ticket. Yeah, I'll hold. Pawn ticket? She pawned the recorder. But why? She needed money. Look, the guy paid for everything else, the TV set, the furniture, the silver. But the tape recorder, that must have been hers. Uh, yeah, Maxwell. There is? Be right down to pick it up. Yeah? Yeah, I read about it in the paper. Well, what can you do? You gave her $50 for this tape recorder? It's a good one. High quality. Listen. Sweet justice, let there be no delay, nor shadow of suspicion. Delay. A, A, that A sound. Say A, not A. Well, great actress, you'll never be, Georgie. Back to the nightclubs for you. Let there be no delay. <laughs> and let there be no delay tonight either. Have it out with Billy Boy without delay. <laughs> Sweet justice, let there be no delay, no shadow of suspicion. <sighs> Honey, if he doesn't shape up, you'll have to... Now, hold it. Let's, uh, let's run it back. And let there be no delay tonight either. Have it out with Billy Boy without delay. Billy Boy. Billy. Let it run. Sweet justice, let there be no delay nor shadow of suspicion. <laughs> Honey, if he doesn't shape up, you'll have to... You'll have to do something definite. Sweet justice, let there be... Let there be... Let there be what? A letter. We'll write a little letter. Just a simple little note guaranteed to get his goat. Ask your husband where he is all the times when he tells you he's at work. Where is he spending those long evening hours? Signed, one of the girls. Well, Billy boy, that should get us some action. You won't have to worry about divorcing her. Maybe she'll divorce you. Mm. <laughs> That's the way to write it. I guess that's all. So now we know his name. Billy. Billy Blossom died. Hi, Bob. Bill, I thought you were coming home late tonight. I am. Ferris and I are making the rounds at some of the watering places. I was at the Starlight Club just a few blocks from here. You want to shut that off for a minute? I'd, I'd just like to relax. Oh, sure. I, I don't know what there is about that song. It just... I don't know. It makes me nervous. I don't know why. Uh, I think you're working too hard. That's possible. You're probably killing yourself. I know, but that's me. How's the case? Inching along. Why were you visiting the saloons? Somebody must have seen that girl out with this guy. They had to go somewhere. Why do you say that? You're a woman. Would you be satisfied just to sit home and wait for your man and never get to go out? Well, I do sit around here most of the time, don't I? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's how it is. No, it's just that this has been an unusually busy year. No, it's just that you're an unusually busy cop. Your own partner, Jerry Ferris, is home a good deal of the time. I know, I talked to Janet. But I'm satisfied. No, Barbara, you shouldn't be. It isn't right. If it's the way you look at your job, your responsibility... You know, I have another responsibility, and it's just as important. You. Bill, I don't mind. And I do understand because I love you. And I want you to be happy in your work. We're, we're going away. Just mm -hmm. as soon as this case is in the bag, I'm taking my leave. Do you realize I've got a whole month coming? Are you sure you And want... do you know where we're going? We're going to Europe. Europe? Oh, Bill. Oh. How can we even talk about it? You yourself said money's very tight. Yeah, but I think... I think I'm out from under.
Now think hard, Molly. The name Billy. What does it mean to you? Not a thing. He never spoke about a guy named Billy? Nope. You knew she was going out with a guy? Yep. Billy means nothing, huh? Not in connection with Georgia Temple. Well, not to me, anyhow. Jerry, let's get out of here. You come across anything in your travels? Nothing. Molly, don't they ever play any other kind of song in here? I like it. Where do you want to go now, Bill? Back to the apartment. Again? Yeah. Let's start all over. I think I see the trail that will lead us straight to the killer. What do we know for sure? We know a girl was killed. We know a man named Billy is the killer. We know they quarreled over money. We're pretty sure Georgia wrote an anonymous note to Billy's wife. We also know the police detective who is investigating the murder is also named Bill. His wife received an anonymous note accusing her husband of being with another woman. Well, before you reach any definite conclusions, wait until I return shortly with Act Three. The great French writer de Maupassant wrote a fascinating short story. The man was a professional knife thrower. His wife was his partner. He threw the heavy, sharp knives at her outlined form on the board. The slightest error of judgment on his part would mean death for her. But the audience was unaware of the real drama on the stage. She was unfaithful to him. He knew it. She even taunted him. Why? Didn't she know that he could have killed her by accident? Ah, but she knew a great secret. He was an artist. He could not deliberately make a mistake. So, she was safe. Why do we tell you this? What is the connection with our story? Well, don't you want to do any of the work yourself? You still haven't told me why I wanted to come back to her apartment. We picked it clean. We found everything that was here. Okay. Now let's look for what isn't here. Like what? The lab says she was killed because she was shot three times. It was a twenty-two caliber pistol. Yeah? Where's the gun? <laughs> well, it would have been great if the guy had left it here, but as you well know, killers aren't usually that considerate. Now, I don't expect them to leave the gun. But what should have been here that wasn't? And they uh, should have been on the floor. For shell casings. You fire a pistol, the shell cases are ejected. Now, would the guy stop to look for him and pick him up? Not likely. No, but for our guy, it is likely. Smart, capable killer. No mess, no fuss. He picks a weapon that makes hardly any noise, just a crack that could be an automobile backfire. No panic. He cleans the place from top to bottom, does away with all his prints. Tries. There's not a trace of him here. Another thing. Notice his closet. It's empty. Would a woman have an empty closet in her house? Never. So what does it mean? It means he kept some clothes here. That's right. And he removed all traces of them. And of himself. Well, we kind of knew all this about him, Bill. How do we move ahead? What did he do with the gun? He got rid of it. Right. He wouldn't keep that gun five seconds longer than necessary. He knows he has to get rid of that weapon. But where? Okay, where? You're this guy. You just killed her. You've got the gun. You go to your car. You drive off. Now, just 900 yards from here is the bridge over the Westland River. A very deep, fast-flowing, murky body of water. So you stop the car. Is there a better place? You know, Bill, you, you say this as if you can actually see it. It's just a question of putting yourself in the killer's place, that's all. I have to come home for dinner more often. This chicken is great. Mm -hmm. You know, I forgot how fantastic a cook you are. <laughs> Bill, I was going through your closet today. I wanted to see if you had anything for the cleaners and... And what? And I came across some clothes. New clothes. Oh. I don't remember you buying them. How do you like them? Well, they're not quite the conservative style you wear on your job. They're not for the job. I just picked them up the other day. I, I passed by this place. They were having a sale. I'll need them for the trip. What trip? 
The trip to Europe, don't you remember? <sighs> do you mean you were serious? Sure. Why do you think I bought all these clothes? Well, then we are going. Look, tomorrow you go shopping. Oh, Bill. Can I depend on you to get yourself a complete wardrobe? Oh, Bill. I'm so happy. I'll get it. Hi, Barbara. Oh, come on in, Paris. Bill, it's your Siamese twin. Anything new? They found the gun. Where? Where you sit. It was in the riverbed. Under the bridge. Anything on it? The lab's checking it now. Let's go down and wait for the report. Well, Bill, won't you finish your dinner? Honey, put it away for me. I'll be starved when I get home. Well, I don't know when you even have a minute for yourself. When did you get a chance to do that shopping? What shopping? <laughs> you mean you boys have secrets from each other? Come here, I'll show you. How do you like that snazzy new wardrobe your partner picked up? Not bad. When'd you buy all these? Simon Legree, you gave him some time off the other afternoon, remember? No, I don't remember. Now, we were checking out places where Georgia Temple might have been seen with her boyfriend. You and I split up. I passed by the store and did a little shopping on the city time. As if the city doesn't owe you more time than it can ever pay you for. Well, don't look at me. We better get downtown and check out the story on that gun. Ballistics establishes this little baby is the gun, all right? What about the serial number? Take a look. It's been filed off. It can't be filed off completely. Lab can always find a trace. This guy knew what he was doing. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm stuck. I must be losing my grip. Come on, Billy. Look at how you carried the case this far. You mean we? No, you. We'd be at ground zero without you. You found out about the note. You found out about the tape recorder, which gave us his first name. And you figured out where to look for the gun. That was great police it's work. It's just routine police work, Jerry. And what does it mean? No, I'm stuck. This uh, guy, he's been making moves. And I've been finding the counter move to each of them. I get him to reveal his motive. Then his first name. Then where he tried to hide the murder weapon, and we find the gun. And on the serial number, I should be able to trace him down, but... Bill? You feeling okay? But there's no serial number. It's as if this guy knew every move I'd make, and he leads me on, feeds me one little clue after another. And just when I think I'm ready to go in for the kill, he yanks the rug out from under. <laughs> you know something? Right now, I'm sure he's laughing at me. Uh, we've been in spots like this before, Bill, hundreds of times. Now, there comes a time in every case when you know who's smarter. You are the guy you're after. Bill, you don't know what you're saying. What I'm saying is we're up against a killer who's smarter than we are. And that's why he's going to get away with it. I know. I came to see you. Oh, well, come on in. What's he got there? It's a portable typewriter. Oh. Well, can I do something for you, Jerry? Well, you'll have to answer your question, Barbara. Oh, wow, you sound serious. I should. It's a matter of life and death. Barbara, did, did you get a note, a, a typewritten note suggesting that Bill might be seeing another woman. What are you talking about? I said it's a matter of life and death. No, it's a matter of my own personal and private business. A note by a girl named Georgia Temple. Georgia? You mean the one who was murdered? Yeah. Well, but what would that have to do with... Barbara, you did get the note. How'd you know? It's the only thing that makes sense. The only possibility left. Why would she write me a note about Bill? I said we have to help him. Help him? Do what? Get the killer. You see, right now, he's stuck. He needs a hand. He needs a clue. When we first came across the idea of the note, he said the note. Some wife has it. If we find the wife, we find the eye. But I destroyed the note. I have Miss Temple's typewriter. Oh. 
You're trying to frame him. What makes you think I would help you? Barbara, he killed her. No. No, I don't believe you. You're talking about Bill. I know, but not your Bill, another Bill. I don't understand a word you're saying. Please, Barbara, Bill is two people. Two? Yes. One is the hard-working, brilliant detective, your husband, the guy who loves you. The other is a wild kind of guy who lives in the same skull, but nobody ever knew about him, not even Bill himself. And suddenly this, this guy broke out. He fell for a girl named Georgia Temple. Jerry, get out of here. He had to kill her, and Bill's been trying to find him. You're saying my Bill is a murderer. I'm saying there's a part of me he doesn't know about. It all comes down to one thing. He's the killer. Yes, he's the killer. Say it that way. But he's blocked it. It's gone from his mind. Jerry. Jerry. What are you going to do? Help him. Help him find the note. He'll do the rest. Barbara, it has to be done. Mind if I put something on the record player, Bill? No, of course not. How did he know enough to get rid of the serial number? What are you saying, darling? He knew enough to file it down all the way. I would have had him. Why do I see it so clearly? <laughs> Actually, it's the way I would have done it myself. But I'll get him. He left something loose. He couldn't have tied everything up. Barbara. Barbara, don't you hear that thing? It's stuck. Well, if it bothers you, turn it off. Well, that silly thing bothers me even when it isn't stuck. Every blossom dies. What a name for a song. Well, turn it off, honey, if it bothers you so much. All right, I will. Did you, uh, drop this piece of paper on the floor? What piece of paper? Here. Huh? What does it say? It says... Dear Mrs. Maitland, ask your husband where he is all the times when he tells you he's at work. Where is he spending those long evening hours? Hi, Bill. I think I found a new lead. Forget it. We just won the whole ball game. We found the note. Oh, Bill. Note? The note Georgia Temple wrote to the guy's wife. Remember what we said? Find the wife and you got the guy. Yeah. We got the wife. Dear Mrs. Maitland... Her husband's the killer. Her... Her... Husband. Yes, Bill? But I... I'm, I'm her husband. Yes, Bill. No. No, I... I didn't kill her. I didn't kill her. Bill? Tell that to Detective Lieutenant Bill Maitland. Tell the detective you didn't kill her. Oh, Bill. Barbara, I... I didn't. How could I? I don't care, Bill. I'll stay with you. But I didn't. I didn't. You see it now, Bill. I... Bill, can you? Oh. Yes, Jerry, I... I see it now. What happened? What happened? You know what happened. You thought it was a joke when you sent it back at her apartment. I thought it was a joke. You said, did you take her home that night? And did she ask you in for a nightcap? And did one thing lead to another? Well, yes. It did. It did. But a thing like that, it was wrong, and it kept getting worse, and I couldn't face it anymore. It wouldn't go away. She wouldn't go away. Or maybe I couldn't stay away, so... I had to blast it away, wipe it out. I fired three shots and it was gone, gone. And I was released. I was... I was free. As if it had never happened. Lieutenant, we've got all the evidence. Do you want to bring him in? Jerry? We have to bring him in. He's a killer. Temporary insanity was the way it finally wound up legally. 
Bill is no longer a cop. He had undergone a long period of treatment, and he and Barbara live quietly together now. Bill's life isn't very exciting, but it has other satisfactions. At least, Bill knows who he is. I shall be back shortly. In music, they have what is known as theme and variations. Often one composer will take a theme written by another and write a beautiful series of variations on it. The basic theme of today's story was, of course, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which was a variation by Stevenson on a famous medieval legend. Jekyll and Hyde, a famous partnership which only requires one person. And you find it so often in almost everyone. Our cast included Michael Tolan, George Petrie, Kathleen Byers, and E.V. Juster. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>